I am very excited to kick off the new year with this Emerging Tech Showcase. And this event is going to happen every Thursday for the year of 2024 and hopefully many years beyond. Um, and the idea here really is um, really came from when I was a director or head of innovation in a law firm. Um, there's a lot of products to see. There's no way to keep up on it all. And so the idea here is let's make one place where we can all come together. I'll make sure to bring you the best new products that you're not getting emails from or seeing yet. And uh, you just keep joining every Thursday and you'll keep your innovation and your new, uh, your new knowledge up to date. So I think there's a lot of exciting, uh, exciting things coming. And I think our next couple of um, our next couple of presentations are going to be very exciting for you. Um, I'm Cheryl Wilson Griffin. I've been in legal tech now for 23 and a half years. I don't know, a long time since before we called it legal tech when it was still lit support because that's all we had <laughs> litigation technology. Um, I am uh, the CEO and founder of Legal Tech Consultants, and we are really focused on driving innovation in legal through supporting kind of the three major stakeholder groups. So we work very closely with capital, private equity, venture capital um, to help startups raise funds and also as a strategic um, analyst for due diligence. We uh, work with law firms as fractional CIOs, as project managers, um, and as uh, kind of innovation drivers uh, on an interim basis. And then we work very closely with startups with folks like Matt and Sergey here um, to help them really make sure that what they're bringing to the market um, is a great fit and, and really serves everyone's needs. And so the idea is bringing those three stakeholders together and, because we all need each other, it turns out, um, and making sure that we're all kind of moving forward together, I think gives us the best outcome. So that's the goal. Um, okay, so let's jump in to today's session, which I am incredibly excited about. Um, I wanted to start with eDiscovery for two reasons. Um, one of them is, uh, oh, and I'll, I'll hit on that. <laughs> Lots of clicking. But um, there's two reasons I wanted to start out with eDiscovery. Um, one is it's where I started my career many, many years ago. So um, the pain of it is very near and dear to my heart. And the second reason is it is the area where there is the most disruption coming, coming your way. And so getting ready for that is, uh, is, is kind of key to your 2024, I think. So uh, thinking about the goal today, discover innovations, find some tech that meets exactly the thing you're looking for, and talk to trusted experts. So you'll, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions, as many questions as you want. We're also going to ask for your feedback. Um, and feedback is always appreciated by a startup. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly, we need to know because we need to grow. So let's talk about today's founders and today's products. Um, first up, we're going to see Beagle. Um, and Beagle is led by Sergey Demi. Demyanov. Demyanov. Dem yes. Demyanov. I could keep putting the accent on the wrong syllable. I'm so sorry. I'll nail it, though. Um, from Discover Beagle. And one of the reasons I was so excited about this product when I came onto it, um, what, middle of last year it must have been, um, is I think this is probably the most game-changing product entering um, the review space. Um, I think humans are going to be able to save themselves in the not-so-distant future from the cruelty of e-discovery. And Beagle's going to be one of the people leading that. Um, our other founder who's with us today is Matt Rasmussen from Mode One. And Mode One is, I think, one of the coolest new products as well, because we're really focused on, oh, Clayton, you don't need to, this is just my overview. No need to click through. Um, but uh, Mode One is focused on targeted collection from iOS and Android. And I'm telling you what, like I know that's one of the most painful things an e-discovery person is dealing with today. And so I can't wait for him to talk you through uh, what's going on there. Um, last two things I'll say is obviously a full e-discovery demo of like collection or production is not possible in the time frame allowed. So you're gonna see some screenshots and we'll, in some cases and talk through some things. Um, so we'll have that. So don't think that we're going to do a collection. You're going to watch us do it. That would be painful and we'd all hate it. Um, second thing I'll say is just wanted to give a quick shout out to Sergey and to Discover Beagle um, for making it into the finals at the ABA Tech Show that was just announced yesterday. And so they'll be competing in the startup pitch competition there on February 14th. So hope that we will see you all there. So with that, um, we'd love to uh, turn it over to Sergey and allow you to introduce yourself and jump in and, and let's go from here. 
Awesome. Thank you, Cheryl. And uh, yeah, I'm very proud to be the first presenter this year. Um, big responsibility as well. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, let me tell about Beagle and uh, first of all, what Beagle is. Uh, imagine that your e-discovery platform uh, understands natural language and has reasoning capabilities. This is essentially the core of uh, what Beagle can do. Um, and um, what that means, uh, right now, all the platforms, they are essentially hard-coded, meaning that uh, they can do what they are programmed to do for. And even if they use like predictive analytical tools, those are usually um, pretty straightforward algorithms based on uh, some uh, simple heuristics. And in contrast to that, Beagle can actually um, understand the intentions of the user, understand uh, the requests of the user, understand the content of the documents it's working on, and kind of match them with each other. Um, it, it helps on different levels. For example, with search, right? Um, you don't have to um, iterate over different synonyms of the keywords anymore. You don't have to you know, put your uh, citations in different ways. Uh, you can ask the questions and um, you know, get much more meaningful results and also get much less uh, false positives if you do that. And uh, based on these capabilities, uh, we also introduce uh, the concept of automated document review. Um, this is essentially a way to analyze a large chunks of documents, um, what is currently fully done by uh, humans, by contractor attorneys usually. Um, so we do that in an automated way, and uh, this allows our clients to save a lot of time, money, and uh, of course, uh, the accuracy is also going up uh, because um, with um, you know how people currently do that, it's pretty difficult to achieve uh, the desired level of quality. Um, I uh, also want to quickly talk about how all this started. Uh, basically, it's uh, it the idea of making this product uh, uh, arised over six years ago when I was still at my PhD. I was working on deep learning and. Uh, I was mostly working with computer vision problems. However, I was kind of monitoring what's happening in adjacent areas. And um, I was pretty impressed with some results. Like even at those times over six years ago, it was already possible uh, to ask natural language, language questions about Excel tables and get meaningful results. Um, I was frankly so impressed uh, with these emerging reasoning capabilities uh, that I decided that, yeah, uh, I want to do some product based on that. And uh, legal industry was frankly uh, one of the obvious choices uh, for several reasons. First, I knew that these service, the legal services overall, they are very expensive. And uh, uh, what attorneys mostly do is can analyze the content, and, and analyze uh, texts and do reasoning about this. So, you know, there was a perfect match basically. And, um, uh, second reason is that, you know, reducing the price for the legal services also um, increases access to justice to smaller litigants who cannot really afford uh, to, you know, even enter into the litigation process right now because they anticipate the very, very high prices uh, of associated with this. Um, yeah, so how um, all of this started, I um, was at SNAP for the last five years where I led the machine learning team. Uh, however, at some point, I decided to pursue this idea. I found a co-founder who is Udit Sud, and uh, he is currently a senior associate at, um, litigator at Covington, a uh, pretty big law firm. And um, together, we kind of narrowed down this vision of building a product uh, into the tool for e-discovery, the platform for e-discovery, um, for many reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, again, this is the area where these reasoning capabilities are needed the most. And second, he knew all the issues with the current solutions. And uh, he realized that uh, they are very far from being perfect. And there is an opportunity to build. Um, I think that would be much more powerful and uh, capable than uh, what they have on the market right now. And uh, later on, I found the uh, CTO, it's uh, Maxim. Uh, he was previously an, an ML engineer at Facebook and also a machine learning manager at Snap, similar to me. Uh, yeah, I convinced him to become the CTO. It was not easy, um, but yeah, uh, here is our team. And uh, we are also con consulted by top industry advisors. One of them is the director of e-discovery at another big law firm. And uh, um, 
Our third advisor is a general counsel um, at several um, recent unicorns. Um, like right now, it's one of the top company. I can't tell about this, but yeah, he has a lot of experience and helping us a lot. Um, okay, can we go next? Ooh, Sergey, one more question. I, sure. I'm not sure you said it, but it's one of my favorite things. You've already successfully launched and sold a product. That's how you got to Snap, right? Yes, exactly. Um, I was a founder of another startup, which uh, was about uh, machine learning effects uh, on mobile devices. And at some point, it was acquired by Snap. Excellent. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt. Good. Carry on. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to tell about... Um, uh, the case study uh, that we made and about the automated document review overall. Um, so yeah, uh, let's uh, look at this email. And this is an email from a collection of Coca-Cola emails, uh, which were published as a part of some litigation process. Um, in this email, they discuss the publication of a research uh, article, which shows that uh, one of the major predictors of childhood obesity is uh, the lack of physical activity and not the sweet drinks. Obviously, Coca-Cola guys are happy about that. Um, so yeah, if we um, go to the next slide, if we had the uh, following hypothetical request for production, for example, those which are looking for scientific findings about sugar, sweetened beverages, um, this is the result that would be that we would generate for this uh, type of email. And uh, unlike the uh, human reviewers, which produce simply yes or no binary tag. We also generate you the document summary. We generate you the reasoning, why exactly we make this decision. And we also generate the relevancy score. So you can um, sort out all your documents and go through them accordingly. But most importantly, it's the reasoning. So you can verify why this decision has been made. Um, and uh, you know, if you have just a single tech, you can do, can't really do it. But here, you can see the summary, you can see the reasoning, you can understand um, why. Like, and if there is a, any problem, you can fix this. Um, can you go next? So yeah, we conducted the case study. We took 500 emails like that, and we asked uh, the contract attorneys, uh, two groups of contract attorneys actually, uh, to do the review of those. Um, and uh, the first group was doing like they usually do, just yes or no uh, tagging. And the second group was requested to do it like we do, uh, with uh, re response for each RFP. There were 11 of them, and with reasoning why they make the particular decision. And the results were very, very interesting. Um, first, there was a huge difference in the number of responsive documents. Uh, second group identified six times less responsive documents than the first one. So I think it, it's, I'm not even talking about Beagle. So this is just something which tells you a lot about the quality of human review. Uh, like if you, you know, do it like you usually, um, you get a lot of false positives probably. And uh, then we compared it with Beagle. Uh, so what we figured out is that uh, Beagle responsive um, rates and recall precision rates um, were uh, higher than what we could get, even for those who are doing this kind of careful review with all the reasoning. Uh, the recall rate was uh, about the same for all three groups. However, the precision differed a lot. And uh, Beagle was actually on top uh, of uh, two uh, human groups. Uh, we were pretty happy to see these results. Like, no cheating, I promise. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I think it gives a lot of um, uh, promise of, uh, you know, what can be achieved using uh, the services like we provide. Uh, can we go next? Oh, sorry, can I ask one or two uh, follow-up questions? Of course, questions of course. Um, and Kalina, can you just go back a slide so I can ask the specific? So I think the the idea here was to really prove out the the technology, right? So you went in and kind of did a head-to-head uh, head -head comparison, Coke versus exactly. Coke type, uh, type heads up. And then thinking about, I think the other thing that's going to be really important um, as we move more AI into legal is how we prove that it's legitimate. And I think you know, this gets into it, but can you talk just a teensy tiny bit about um, how you're going to verify or, or legitimize um, the results for folks? Yeah, exactly. Um, so if um, necessary, we can do um, random uh, selection of the results that we do. And uh, those random randomly selected documents with all the re reasoning, with all the results that we provide, 
um, they would be reviewed by uh, human attorneys and uh, those can uh, verify if the reasoning is correct or not. And uh, then we can just look at this and um, recall in precision rates if we consider what they say as the ground truth. Uh, we can uh, get those numbers and compare with the industry standards. And as uh, from my understanding, uh, it's okay that if uh, the error rate is 25% or less right now, which is pretty large numbers for me. And we can certainly demonstrate that Beagle, Beagle can do better than that. I love it. And then one last question, um, timelines. I know, cause I've done a head to head with other products before and found the computers obviously way faster. Can you give us any, any feedback on this particular case study of like how long it took the humans versus the computer? Uh, yes. So it, it, in this case, it was a pretty small data set. Um, so it's a bit difficult to compare because the most of the time it was about um, setting up the instructions and telling what needs to be done. Uh, I, I think the fewer time of the review was relatively small, uh, probably a couple of days. However, per our uh, own estimates, uh, Beagle can be equivalent to about 100 attorneys. Um, yeah, I don't think it's possible to hire that many and uh, work with that many. So yeah, you can do the math. Excellent. Thank you. Sorry, carry on. Sure. Uh, can we go next? Yes. So I told about automated document review, but I also wanted to talk about several other features. And first of all, it's of course, natural search and QA. And I think it's, it's not a surprise anymore that uh, people can do natural language question answering about particular document, which is of course useful if you have, you know, a 100 page uh, contract or something like this. So you can uh, search for particular um, um, elements of this contract by asking questions. But we also provide this functionality for the whole data set. And uh, this is already not uh, that easy thing to do. Uh, so you can get the responses as the list of documents. And moreover, uh, we provide you a kind of short snippet um, as a summary of the documents that we have identified with all the links uh, to the evidence, uh, whatever is relevant uh, to, to your question. So you, if you want to get like a quick idea of what the response is, you can go look at this uh, snippet. You can see uh, what is the evidence, verify that uh, this evidence is indeed supportive. And if you want to do a more thorough analysis, uh, you can go uh, next. And uh, the key thing here is that, again, you don't really, uh, yeah, can we switch back? Um, you, you don't have to reformulate all your questions all the time, um, you know, go over different keywords, go over modifiers, uh, even it works even uh, for different languages. So imagine your document is in uh, French and uh, you ask in English, it's still, it, it's still, capable of identifying uh, those documents uh, if the content is uh, what it, if it, the content is relevant. Um, this is one thing. And another thing that um, we will uh, soon introduce to the platform is natural language statistical queries and visualization. Um, imagine the situation that you have a lot of invoices and you wanna see uh, the dynamics of um, the I don't know, revenue uh, from different groups of those invoices. And in those cases, like if, if you, if you want to do this right now, you would have to export all the numbers into separate spreadsheet, uh, build some chart on top of that. But in Beagle, you would be able just to ask this query and you would get uh, those charts straight away uh, because we are, we are able to combine all of the sections together, get those numbers and build the chart on top of that. Um, and I think this is another pretty useful feature for users, which would simplify their work. Love it. Yeah, can we go next? Um, yeah, I don't, and I can't really talk much about um, what we are building right now, uh, but overall, uh, we will be enhancing Beagle's capabilities uh, to approach the level of uh, junior attorneys. Uh, so we'll, we will be adding, um, more capabilities in terms of what it can do with the data, uh, in terms of like how it can operate with uh, um, different requests and so on, so on. And uh, yeah, and at some point you will be basically able to even ask for insights. For example, um, you know, you get uh, data from the opposite party and you wanna 
uh, as you know what kind of weaknesses does this um, data set demonstrate and like you know how I maybe can use that for to to strengthen for my own position um, so this is something you would have to work a lot to get but if you get those kind of hints it's pretty easy to verify if this is indeed the case so imagine like you get these hints and your work will be not just you know um, doing this search by yourself but rather verifying the results of what the machine does and this is what we see uh, as a trend where everything goes and this is what we mean by, by cruelty free discovery I love it. So, so a quick peek into future of product vision, but there's a few secret things you're still working on. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. And then, um, how can people um, connect if they want to just stay up to date on, on on the status of the product? Sure. Yeah. Uh, please subscribe to our wait list. Uh, here is the QR code for that, and uh, we will uh, stay in touch with you, and you will get all the recent updates. Excellent. And I assume at some point you'll be asking for kind of inviting first customers in. Of course, people on the wait list are going to be the first ones to get invited in. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, so this will be this quarter. So, yeah, not too long to wait. Yes, exactly. And I think that's something we didn't necessarily say. So you are in beta testing right now actively with a couple of clients, right? And they're actively testing the system. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Thanks. So excellent. Working on refinement, kind of getting everything beautiful and ready for the rest of the world. Yes, yes. Um, do add, throw any questions either into the chat or into the Q&A. Um, and then I think the last question I had for you, Sergey, is, oh, perfect. Yep, stay friends, sign up for the wait list. Um, you will be at Legal Week. Yes, yes, we are going to be at Legal Week uh, this January, uh, booth 1310. Uh, please come to our booth and uh, we would be happy to chat. And we'll, they'll be uh, showcasing the product. We'll be much closer to the public release date. Um, so yeah. it'll be a great time to, uh, to check Beagle out. Exactly. Excellent. Any, any other questions? And we'll have a little bit more time for questions at the end too. Otherwise, I may transition. Excellent. Okay. No questions there. Perfect. Thank you, Sergey. That was wonderful. Let me just send Matt as the featured uh, speaker here for one second. So, very excited to introduce our next founder, uh, Matt Rasmussen from Mode One. Ooh, time out. One second. I have a product poll. I have a poll for you first. Let me do that first. Uh, sorry, Matt. No, no, you're good. You're good. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see if I can do this. All right. So, has everyone gotten the poll pop up on their screen? I just got one. Okay, excellent. I'm like I. Uh, Zoom has been making lots of updates against my will, uh, and so. Would love if um, if those of you on the call would just jump in um, and answer that poll for us really quickly, um, and just give us some feedback. Tell us what you thought about the presentation, about the product, um, whether you're interested, uh, and then also there's a question at the end. If you are interested in getting more info, you can just add your name. Otherwise, totally anonymous, so we won't know who filled out what. So and I'm sure while people oh go ahead while people are filling out the poll, there was a question in the chat. Oh, did I miss about it? the accuracy of translation? Oh, perfect. So thinking about translation, different language, how how you handle different languages. Sergey, can you uh, respond to that? How did I miss that? Where am I looking? Um, yeah, so how do we handle different languages? Yes, um, accuracy. Yeah, so, oh, there we go. Yeah, so regarding different languages, uh, we use large language models for processing which are trained on uh, corpses of data which are in different languages. And the internal representation of large language models uh, is actually kind of language less. So it, it can handle um, these different requests on different language just by the nature of how it is trained. Um, so this is how it is handled. So it's almost language agnostic in that way then. Yes, yes, exactly. Interesting, I did not know that, that's very exciting. Excellent. All right. I am going to give it three more seconds on the poll, and then we will jump into Matt's presentation. So get your responses in. We love feedback. <laughs> Hook us up. All right. Do we have all? Nearly everyone has participated. The last two that haven't, do it. All right. All right. I'm going to end this poll. We're going to move on up. All right. 
Okay, and that poll. All right, let's move over to Matt. So uh, welcome, Matt, and happy you are here today. Yeah, I'm very excited about Mode 1 and would love to have you jump in and, and chat with us about it a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me this morning. Um, yeah, so uh, quick intro on myself and Mode 1. Um, I'm Matt Rasmussen. I've been in e-discovery just a little less than Cheryl has. I just crested over 22 years in the space. I was, uh, I've been 50-50 or more of a 60-40 split on law firm supporting versus like LSP support in the U.S. Um, I, before I started Mode 1, I formerly was running the litigation technology group over at O'Melveny & Myers out of Los Angeles. And uh, that's actually where I, we came up with the concept for uh, Mode 1. Um, so the story I always tell is I was handling a major M&A uh, deal and there was an SVP that needed his phone collected. And uh, so when I showed up on site with my kit and 80 cords to collect his phone and I explained that I needed to make a, an entire image of his phone to grab just a few text messages that the company was claiming ownership over, um, it got very combative. And so it kind of made me start thinking, I, I had delivered the, I'm sure you guys have delivered this to your clients before is, I need to collect everything off your phone. I'm not going to look at it all, but I need to collect it all so I can grab the specific things I'm looking for. And so uh, I just kind of put myself in the custodian's shoes there on, man, if somebody was collecting my phone, would I want all my photos going out or anything else that's on my phone? If they just needed my text conversations or WhatsApp conversations or other you know, specific components in there. So um, we started mode one in 2018. Um, O'Malveny was gracious enough to allow me to kind of moonlight on that project and develop that project while I was there. Um, we are in our third year here now uh, in full production. So we've had two very strong years here. Um, and um, yeah, so that's that's kind of the the high level of what kind of got us got us into it. I'm not going to be very slide heavy. I, I would love to kind of just dive in and kind of show you guys how the product works. Um, like Cheryl said, we're not going to do a full collection on the call here. I'd love to follow up with everybody after this if anyone wants to see a live demo. Um, but I'd uh, love to kind of just dive in and show you guys the product. I think that's the best way to, to talk through it. Let's do it. Cool. All right, let me share my screen real fast and then uh, we'll dive in. You know, Matt, one of my favorite things about um, your the story too, the founding story is, you know, having been in e-discovery myself, I used to advise attorneys, don't put anything on your phone that you don't <laughs> want to come up later in a production because we're going to have to take your whole phone. Like that's what's going to happen. So I think solving that problem and really getting into the user's needs is just um, a game changer. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And you know, the other thing we always talk about here also is, I mean, email is somewhat the same thing, right? It's a digital record, it's going into the internet, there's no clawing that back kind of thing. What's interesting about your phone is it's a much more casual conversation, right? You're not being as formal in your communications, you're you're not being as defensive in how you're writing. So it does uh one of my favorite quotes I've heard is that uh, only dumb criminals keep their secrets in email, right? And so it's been uh, just, uh, I just, that's just funny that you kind of said that there, Cheryl. Um, okay, cool. So uh, here's what we built. Um, this is a cloud-based collection software um, that can remotely connect to smartphones anywhere in the world. It takes about 10 minutes to get a phone enrolled. So if you had a, a client in Morocco, I need 10 minutes with the custodian or you need 10 minutes with your custodian, and we can start actively pulling data from their phone. So to kind of satisfy the remote access part, we're not shipping people, we're not shipping kits. So we built out in the cloud. Um, our current cloud is AWS. Um, something to kind of look forward throughout the year here is that we are also making some investments into building out an Azure environment as well for those that are Microsoft you know, um, specific. Um, but we're, we're built in AWS. So I'm just going to log in here. And then what we're greeted with here are these data vaults. And um, as this is authenticating, these are the organizations that I'm a member to. Um, this allows us to keep data into single tenancy. And that goes for corporate ownership that goes to GDPR compliance for in-country review and things like that. So this allows us to have, you know, it could I could have a mode one US, a mode one EU, a mode one South America, and that gives us controls on, you know, various, uh, you know, country regulations and um, specifications. 
Um, I'm just going to jump into a demo data set here. And then we're going to be greeted with just kind of a standard database list, pretty familiar for everybody. Um, so I'm just going to jump into this demo. Um, and then we're greeted with the, um, the devices here. And so I'm going to walk you guys through how we kind of scope a phone, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done here. Um, so to, to do a quick phone, like I said, this enrollment process takes about 10 minutes, and this is the process. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to do an, I, um, an iOS device. So we support, well, just let me back up real quick. Um, mode 1 is able to support um, Androids, so anything running 8.0 and higher um, on a commercially available phone that's available in the U.S. So we're not testing Huawei's or anything like that yet. We can test, we can support any iOS device, that's iPhones and iPads running any iOS, as long as you can power it on and connect to the internet, then we're great. And then we can also ingest device reports. So we know that sometimes a forensic image is necessary, or you may have a former collection that was a forensic image that has a lot of data in there that you may not need. Um, so we built in some functionality so we can ingest those reports as well, and then kind of slice and dice the data and find what we're looking for. So uh, I'm going to do the iOS side of things, jump in here, and we broke this down into five easy steps, right? So the first step is just custodian information. So we can just type in, you know, who we're collecting from, what's their phone number, what's their email address, and a friendly display name. So once we do that, this is the second pain point we wanted to solve. So the first pain point is being remote, right? Being able to access these phones in real time. The second is scoping better off the device. So no longer needing to do a full image or a full backup, giving up all your data to give up a couple of text conversations. So mode one is now supporting 22 apps off the phone. We are not doing full backups. I cannot even support full backups. So if you needed a full backup of a phone, you needed a, if it was a criminal matter or an intellectual property leak and you guys are trying to get into the ones and zeros that's a that's a full file system you know uh image and that's not the right the right tool what this tool is going to be used for is exactly what i was talking about with that m a deal right you have a custodian they had some messages in a chat app they maybe had a voice recording off their phone that's what's required and that's what's in scope and so that's what we're providing here is better scoping tools to laser in what we're looking for so we do that scoping in several different ways. The first here is based on application data. Um, so if I was just to kind of show you guys, we can do you know, like, <clears throat> excuse me, your uh, text messages, contacts for friendly names. We can do a list of installed apps. So you'll notice here, we don't support uh, ephemeral messaging apps like Signal and things like that, just because that's it's built not to be collected. So we built in this installed apps list just to allow us to identify what's on the phone. So if I collected Cheryl's phone, mode one can't access signal, but I can notice that signal is installed on the phone. Then that's an easy conversation with Cheryl just to say, hey, I know we're collecting your text and WhatsApp. We know that notice their signal. Is that for personal? Do you ever use it for work? She says, no, I never use it for work. We check the box and go on, right? So we wanted to build this to be as flexible as we can, given the, the various matters or, or uh, 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 necessities that are uh, requiring us to collect this data. <clears throat> um, so first is the uh, scoping by app. The second is we're able to also uh, scope by date. So if you only needed to grab 30 days of texts or a week of text, or maybe I only, I've got 10 years of texts on my phone, but I've only worked at the business for 12 months, right? Mode one can focus in on that date range so that we're only collecting that data. And that's what's coming off the device. So we've got that. And then the other thing that we built, and this is great for all of you guys. Uh, this is the first time we literally pushed this out this morning. This is what we've been working on for like the last six months. So you guys are literally, I'm not kidding. You guys are the first ones to see this actually. Uh, so we are the only tool that can participant filter off the phone now. And what that means is if I knew the 10 numbers of folks that I want to find off the device, all we have to do is enable participant filtering. I can add a specific person or email address if they're using like an iCloud account to message. Um, if you have a list of those numbers, we can upload that list. 
And what that means is if I fed, I keep using Cheryl as the example, but if I fed Cheryl's number into the system and then ran a collection of my phone, the only thing that's coming off the phone is Cheryl's conversations. And what this means, and this kind of helps us solve the third pain point we wanted to tackle here is speed. So when I was at the firm, if I had a phone, I would have to tell my, my attorneys, I'll have Cheryl's texts collected in a week, week and a half. I can have all her email in 24 hours, but a few text messages are going to take a long time. And there's a lot of reasons for that. <clears throat> but what we're able to do here now is because we can be so hyper-targeted and we're grabbing such a smaller set of data from the device, our collections are about sub-90 minutes now. That's end-to-end. -end. Um, so that's from when we kick off and enroll the phone to the time that we're delivering it to the attorney team. It's about 90 minutes there. Obviously, there's some components that are variables there, internet connection speed, you know, how available the custodian is, things like that. But um, it's been awesome. So I'm glad you guys get to see this for the for the first time. Um, the, the fourth step for any of the uh, lit tech kind of veterans here, this is just an efficiency gain. Um, I always hated if I had to run a process and that process was going to end in the middle of the night. And my attorneys wanted to see it first thing in the morning. So I had to set an alarm for 3 a.m. to wake up and kick off processing or something. So we just built that in here to be to be a standard. Um, and then the last part is just uh, enrolling to the phone. Um, so if I was to do this and I'll just I'll show you guys how I'll just enroll it just to give you guys a sense of what the enrollment looks like. And then I'll jump into the the actual like review of the data. Okay, so um, I'm just launching my agent on the phone. And that agent <clears throat> gives us a six digit code. And that's what gives us the authentication to talk to the phone, grab the, give it the scoping data that we want, and then have the phone retrieve that back for us. So I'm just gonna, I know you can't see it on my other screen, but my code is this. I'm gonna connect to that device. And in about five seconds, now I have remote access to my phone, right? So you guys are seeing the web UI that's going to be accessed anywhere uh, that's not on the ITAR list, right? Any country that's not on the ITAR list. If you've got an internet connection, you can do this. Um, we literally will help clients at six, seven, eight o'clock at night, and we can run this from our phone through Chrome or Edge or whatever you guys are using on your phone, right? We can conduct collections remotely that way too. So once we're done there, all I do is I select the phone I want, I start the collection, and then what's gonna happen is there are two levels of custodian consent. So we're not covertly grabbing this data, we're ethically handling this, we're protecting the custodian's data privacy. And so um, what's happening on my end is it's asking for authentication that I can access the device. I just gave it that, and now it's gonna kick off all the, the automated processes. So, um, I'll pause there. Um, just make sure that's running. Cool. So that's the that's the collection process. Um, like I said, at this point, we uh, we hang up the phone. Everyone goes about their day. Custodian can get back to work. I can get back to work, um, and that's the process. Um, so just to kind of fast forward ninety minutes when this gets done, if I was to jump in and show you guys uh, a full phone, um, this is my uh, phone right here. Um, and so we aggregate all the data we collect here and kind of built a, a nice, easy web UI where we can be managing this data. So if you think about how data on a phone works versus how data, data from like O365 works, there's no longer four corners of a document here. There's not one Word document. There's not one, word, uh, one email. We could have 10 years of texts that's just one big record that keeps getting added to. So um, we wanted to build a kind of a, a newer uh, way to kind of slice and dice and get through this data, find what we're actually looking for, and then export that out for where the rest of the case data is. So um, you can see here, it, it's very familiar. It works how you'd think it would work, right? I can go through my WhatsApp conversations, my phone call log, my contacts. Um, I show my text messages here. Um, and what we can do is we can quickly go through, and if I know, you know, names or numbers, I can go and search those. And I have a thousand threads. I can quickly find the thread or threads I'm looking for. I can even select those threads. 
and then actually be viewing the conversation just like you would be seeing it on the phone, right? So once we're able to kind of work through this, like we've got ways to participant filter it. We can also add additional date filters. So maybe you've got several custodians that are running different relevancy date periods. So we can handle that. We can also support keyword searching. Um, and once we've identified the, the information that we're, we're looking for here, um, then I just got to minimize the viewer thing. There we go. Um, once we've identified the threads we're wanting, I just select that thread. I come under here to export the data. And then we give just a convenient kind of pop-up picker of just a wizard on how to uh, export the data in whatever format you want. So on a high level, um, these are the, oops, these are the, these are the output file types we support right now. So aesthetic renders in PDF, text files, CSVs, JSON outputs, and RSMF. We're supporting 1.0 and 2.0 there. Um, you guys can select whatever file type you want. We also provide eDiscovery uh, ready load files. This has been loaded into literally every tool on the market. Everything is uh, pre-baked. There should be you know, little to no edits there. So that's another thing I wanted as a, as a lit tech person. I just hated kind of updating my vendor's work. Um, and then we can also include attachments as standalone children, or we can turn that off. Um, so for anybody that's had to send a text conversation to a partner, and you're also including the zip file with all the attachments and explaining how to unpack those. And anyone that's had to deal with that pain point, uh, we've kind of resolved that here as well. Um, last thing to show you is um, we can split these conversations. So if I wanted to split it by a date, I could do 24 hours. I could do weekly breaks. And what that means is if Cheryl and I had a one year long text thread and I wanted to split it by month, then mode one's framework will return 12 records for you, one per month. So we've got, I think the majority of the industry right now is really focusing on 24 hour splits. Um, our clients that are in the AMLOP 10 are now starting to focus on weekly splits because they like to see if there's a relevant three day period, they'd rather produce that as one record versus three separate records. So it's, but the, the, the biggest takeaway here that I want you guys to hear is just that this is flexible for whatever you need, whatever your client needs, whatever is being requested from opposing counsel. Um, we just wanted to make it super easy. So once we've got all that information set, I export that data, it'll kick that automatically off for us. And then all exports are aggregated here. Um, the user will get an email when it's ready. Um, and then we can download it um, and load it into whatever the, the e-discovery tool is. Um, and after that, uh, you guys are in control of when, how long the data sits in our environment. Um, we did about 1,800 phones last year, and I think we only had about 30 that lasted longer than 30 days in our system, right? So the, the workflow really is connecting to the custodian, spending a couple hours grabbing that data, finding the relevant data we're looking for, and then archiving this offline. And that's the, that's the, that's the product. So um that's kind of the the high level i know we're kind of going fast i know we've got just a limited amount of time um but happy to answer questions um cheryl i don't know if anything came up while i was going through this but happy to unpack anything you guys you'd like yeah so one question i have some but one that came in was um is the device inoperable during that whatever it is 90 minutes or whatever that the collection's going on or can they be using it still great question yep so you can totally use it um we just ask on the on the Android side, we pull directly from the phone. So we can pull over 5G or Wi-Fi. You can fully use your phone while it's in use. Um, on the iPhone, Apple doesn't allow us to push it over Wi-Fi or 5G. So we have to use just the charging cable. So we just ask that they keep the phone plugged in to their laptop, but we can they can still make phone calls. They can still take text messages. And we've also built it to kind of accommodate what I call custodian collision. So like... There's so many times when I was at O'Malveny where I'd be collecting a phone and then the custodian would, I have to go to lunch and they just unplug their phone and leave, right? And that flunked the collection and now I got to start it all over. Um, we actually built the system to accommodate that. So even if the phone goes offline, um, loses connection to Wi-Fi or the internet, the custodian takes the phone to lunch, our system actually knows where it left off. It'll pick, a, it'll pick back up when the phone is available again 
and then it'll revalidate to make sure we didn't miss anything. Love that. Very exciting. I'm glad you have Android as well. I'm an Android girl. Yeah, um, yeah. it's awesome. How do you how do you um how are you pricing this? Because this is so different from anything I've seen. And without getting into specifics, is it per user? Is it per device? Like, how does that work for you? Great. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so that's uh, another pain point I actually really wanted to solve. Um, I did a case study when I was at O'Melveny across the firm, and we were paying. And people always get sticker shock here, and I can totally back up these numbers, but we were paying about forty four hundred dollars a phone to get it end to end into my attorney's hands. And that, if you think about it, that's not just the collection of the phone, right? There's PM time to set up the logistics. There's scheduling time. There's shipping kits. There's hard drives that are sent. <clears throat> there's the collection time, processing time, reporting. And, uh, and so when you take all that stuff together and aggregate it over the month or two months that it takes, uh, we were spending a several thousand dollars. And so my, my my personal pain point was I'd get a vendor bid for a phone. I'd have somebody tell me it's going to cost a thousand bucks. And then I'd get a, an invoice for $4,000 and my client's super upset with me. And so the way we price this, there's two things we charge for. That's it. So we have a flat fee per device and that covers everything. That's the collection, processing, conversion of that data to PDF or SMF or whatever you need. And we waive the first month of hosting. We also waive all user fees. I don't want to have user fees be something that keeps people from using the system. So we just do flat fee. And then the only other thing that comes in is if your data needs to sit in my cloud for longer than 30 days, then I just charge another flat fee for hosting. Um, that's it. Um, and so we just wanted to make this like super clean. It's budgetable. It's predictable. What you tell your client it's going to cost is what it costs. Um, so that's, you know, something we wanted to tackle. I love that. I said, just had another question come in. If there's any more, feel free to throw them either in the Q&A or in the chat. Um, one of the questions that comes up fairly regularly, and surely you've heard this, is did we collect custodian XYZ's WhatsApp, right? So can you easily export out a custodian's collection report that quickly and definitively shows which components, subcomponents were collected and which might have been left behind? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So we do. <clears throat> so me and my partners are testifying experts here. And so everything that we need to have uh, to defensively authenticate the data and audit what was taken is available. Um, so I'm going to steal the screen real quick and just show yeah. that real fast. Um, So that's a great question. So we store that all here in the device information page. And this is also uh, exported with every export. So you guys have this whenever you export one thread or multiple threads. So we have all defensibility metrics that we need from the phone. There are four identifying IDs. So there's UID, serial number, phone number, and IMEI. Um, so we grab all of those. Um, we then get into the device information of what operating system it was running. And then we get in here, this is what we're talking about is what was taken, right? So we we use this for both defensibility and we also use this for a custodian kind of receipt or inventory. Like I could deliver this to the custodian to say, hey, Cheryl, I know I had your phone for an hour or you had your phone collecting for an hour. Here's exactly what we took, right? So we can talk about what applications were taken, what date filter was applied, if we included deleted recovery, we also talk about like the total data size. So if you guys wanted to check, this is a 19 gig image. I, as the custodian, could go look at my phone and go, oh, well, I have 300 gigs of data on my phone. So that at least gives me a, a good slice of, okay, maybe they took a smaller amount of data from my phone. And then we get into the actual app details. So if somebody wanted to go through and check the box on every single thing we took, we can audit and validate that for everybody. So number of contacts, how many threads, how many attachments, how many deleted messages we recovered. Um, down here's my WhatsApp information since that was what was specifically requested. Um, the other thing that we added in here from client requests was we also gave the earliest and last or newest date that's available on that phone or of what we collected. And so this is a full collection, so it's, it's what's available. And why this is important is to the extent of, hey, did we collect Cheryl's WhatsApp we can say yes, but here we can do a very quick look and say, 
well, maybe this case goes all the way back to 2013 and her WhatsApp conversations start in 2015. Then we can have a conversation with her and say, did you have another phone? Did you download WhatsApp, you know, in 2015? It just kind of helps us be a little bit more investigative and find out, you know, could something be missing? Are we sure that we got everything and checking those boxes so that we're, you know, bulletproof? I love it. I love that both of you all are really thinking ahead to what people need to prove that things are legitimate. I think that's one of the things that we maybe haven't done so great in the past as, as legal tech, emerging tech. So very excited that, um, that you're both thinking of that. Excellent. All right. Let me, all right, let me put the poll up here. Give me two seconds to figure out where the hell that button is. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right. Let's go product two. Here we go. All right. So same poll, everyone. We'd love if you can uh, help Matt out, give some feedback, jump on in. Um, again, anonymous. If you want to, if you do want more info, though, you can add your name. Um, and then also the QR code in the lower corner goes to the Mode One website as well. So if you do want to um, connect with uh, Matt directly or uh, book a demo or anything like that, you can do that all on the Mode One uh, site as well. So definitely connect and be friends. Um, especially because our Emerging Tech Thursday kicked off with a piece of brand new tech, Matt. Way yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> no, that's it. Unexpected, yeah. but very exciting. Yeah, no, I'm I'm glad I was able to get it out uh, this morning. Uh, it's uh, it's one of like four things that we're debuting at Legal Tech. So, um, Ooh, this is a Legal Week preview. I love it. Yeah, sure is, sure is. Excellent. All right, there's looks like most of you have replied. One more, one one or two more seconds, um, and then you all are at Legal Week as well. We are. Yep. Um, I don't have the booth number. Don't worry, we do. Oh, you guys got it. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So guys, I'm at booth 1509 if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So definitely uh, go check Matt out. Who knows what other kind of other secret things he's working on, just like Sergey. Secret stuff, you got to go see at Legal Week and, uh, and connect with them to see it. Yeah, that would be great. Excellent. All right, I'm going to end the poll here. Um, and then... Uh, really think about uh, kind of next steps and, and where we go from here. So thank you both, uh, Sergey and Matt. Um, if there are any other last minute questions, please throw them in the chat. We still have a couple minutes, so we, we still have the privilege of the two founders. Um, thinking about kind of where we go from here, um, we hope that you'll come back and see us every Thursday. Um, I am finalizing February's guests and March guests, but I think you're going to really like them. So We'd love to have you come back. Tell your friends, even if next month's guest isn't a great fit for you, pass it on to your friends and tell them to come check it out if it isn't within the, their realm. And then finally, we'll have um, a recording um, of this for anyone who wasn't able to attend available um, as well on our Legal Tech Consultants YouTube channel, where you can also find our AI for Smart People series as well. All right, any final questions? All right, I, I see nothing else. Thank you all so much for kicking off the year with us. We really appreciate you, Matt and Sergey, and looking forward to chatting with everyone soon. Yeah, thanks so much, Cheryl, for putting this together. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Happy Cheers. New Year. Thanks, all. Bye.